Hey everyone, welcome back to Barger Hordes. My name is Robert and I'm a couple days late, but I wanted to update you on my favorite reads of 2019. Um, last year, what I did is I just went through the books that I gave five star rankings to on Goodreads. Uh, I didn't do a corresponding video about the worst reads of the year because I just don't want to dive into negative energy at this point in the year. Uh, but before I go through the books that I included on this list, just a couple of statistics about the way my year ended up. I finished 155 books in 2019, which is by a huge margin the largest number I've ever read in one year. And that's, you know, that's what happens when you become a hermit and retire and read all day and don't leave the house. Uh, that equates for me to over 55,000 pages, and my average book length was 355 pages. So I'm trying to read, you know, full length books all year rather than padding my number by reading super short books. Um, my shortest book and my longest book both happen to be by Charles Dickens. The shortest book was the one I read on Christmas Day, which is A Christmas Carol. It's 94 pages in my version. And then the longest one I read is Little Dorrit, which is 1,008 pages in my edition. My average rating for the year was 3.6, so probably a little bit higher than you might expect. I'm a big believer in bell curves, but I'm also careful to pick books that I think I'm going to enjoy, so I eliminate a lot of the one and the two star reads that I might get if I were more random in my book choices. Um, a couple of other statistics, uh, 27 were nonfiction, 128 were fiction. That's going to change in 2020 because we've added the fiction or the nonfiction category to the book two prize. And one of my goals is to have read all 48 of the books in the field for the prize this year. So I will be reading quite a bit more nonfiction than I have been in the past. Uh, I read 54 books by men, 100 books by women, and one non-binary author. So um, more just just about a two to one ratio, women to men. Um, and then I actually had 11 books that were five star reads, but I didn't really count the 11th one because it's a reread and I knew it was a five star read and that was Graham Swift's Waterland, so I'm not gonna include that. But 10 new reads to me, they're not all brand new books, but they're all new reads to me that I gave five stars to this year. Um, and doing them in the order that I read them. The first one was Larry McMurtry's epic book, Lonesome Dove. Uh, I, I talked about this one at length on my channel. Uh, I like Larry McMurtry anyway. I grew up or spent a lot of my youth growing up in Texas and his writing about the Southwest is just brilliant for me. The second one is a book that has really divided readers and that is uh, Madhuri Vijay's The Far Field. I did this one as a buddy read with several people and all of us loved it, but I know recently I've seen both Britta and Sean the Book Maniac hated it, and so it does kind of seem to split uh, the readers. So you'll have to check this one out for yourself. The third one is Shobha Rao's Girls Burn Brighter, another story told uh, from India. Um, I don't remember a lot of the details about this book, and I'm wondering if that means it was probably really a four-star read rather than a five-star read, but I remember it just being so powerful and that I gave it five stars at the time. Uh, the next one is an Australian debut novel, which I absolutely thought was brilliant, and that is Boy Swallows Universe by Trent Dalton. Um, I was just completely captivated by this. I mentioned at the time that it reminds me in voice of Marcus Zusak's writing, uh, but the story was just so brilliant. And apparently a lot of it was autobiographical, which is a little frightening, uh, but I really enjoyed that one. Uh, the next one is Deep River. I'm completely blanking on the author's first name. Is it something, something Martell? Uh, he also wrote Matterhorn. Uh, this is about a turn of the century story in the Pacific Northwest 
three siblings from Scandinavia moved to the Northwest, basically fleeing from Russian control, and helped settle the area. One, one brother becomes huge in the logging industry, another brother gets into bootlegging, and the sister becomes uh, a union organizer and activist for the Wobblies. And I just really thought it was a terrific story. It's a little long. It's about 900 pages, if I remember correctly. but Or maybe it's only 600 pages. It felt longer. Uh, but I really did like that one. So I, I need to read his uh, Matterhorn. Carl Marlantes, that's the author's name. I knew I'd come up with it sooner or later. The book that shocked me the most that it was a five-star read was one that I had put off and put off and put off because I didn't think I was going to like it at all, and that's Richard Powers' The Overstory. This is a book about trees. This is a long book about trees, and yet I just loved it right from the very beginning. Um, it's told in a series of short chapters about different characters, and over time those characters' lives intersect. But right from the very first one about a diseased tree in Iowa, I was, I was hooked. Uh, the next one is by Tracy Chevalier, her newest one, A Single Thread. This is probably what I would call a charming book more than a, a blockbuster literary powerhouse. But I have often liked Chevalier's books going all the way back to Girl with a Pearl Earring. And this one really struck me as one of her better ones. It's the story of a woman who loses her fiance and her brother in World War I and is really feeling stifled being locked in a home with the bitterness of her mother. And so she strikes out on her own to create her own identity, her own life. And she becomes a broderer, somebody who embroiders um, the church cushions at the cathedral and it's about the circle of people she gets involved in there and her new life that she builds for herself. The next one is by Kate Atkinson and I've had mixed reactions to Kate Atkinson in the past but Sarah at Hardcover Hearts when she was here for the Booktube Prize meetup said I had to read A God in Ruins, that I just had to read it. Uh, it's, it's tied to um, life after life, but it's not a sequel as much as a companion. It, it deals with one of the siblings of the main character in Life After Life. And I just was hooked from the beginning. I just thought it was brilliant. It's by far the best Kate Atkinson that I've read, and I still have a couple others of hers that I have not looked at. And then the last two are very recent. Uh, one is a very short novel called Turbulence by David Zaloy. It is the story of, I believe, a dozen different chapters, a dozen different flights that are linked together. Uh, a minor character in one story will become the major character in the next story, and it's linked like that around the world. Uh, and I just, I wanted more. It was the same feeling I had reading um, Homegoing by Yad Jesse, where you get to the end of one of those short chapters and you're like, no, I want more about that character, but the author moves on to another story and makes you force the connections. And it was, I just thought it was brilliant. Very short read, very quick read, but I thought it was wonderfully done. And then the last one is the only nonfiction book on the list that made it five stars for me. And that was the one I mentioned in my Friday Reads video, Adam Higginbotham's Midnight in Chernobyl. I just think this is a brilliant book. It's hard for nonfiction to be as captivating in some respects as a well-written novel, but this one was. It just, for me, this one was the perfect blend of suspense, of fact, of research, of history, of human stories. I just thought it was brilliantly done. It looks a whole lot longer than it is if you pick it up in the bookstore. Realize that the last 150 pages of this thick book are his notes and his sources and his uh, index. And it's extensive because he wants you to know every single source that he drew from in creating this narrative history. And I just think it's wonderful. So there you have it. Those are the 10 books that I gave five stars to in 2019. That equates to what, six or seven percent maybe of what I read, which is about right, somewhere between seven to 10 percent 
you would expect of all the books that you read would be five stars if you if you're drawn to the bell curve idea that I am as a former teacher uh, I, I may have been a little stingier with five stars than I have been in the past but I'm probably a little bit more generous with my four stars than I should have been in the, in the past years so anyway I hope you're having a great start to 2020 uh, that you've settled on your Goodreads challenge and you're launching into the new year I decided I would keep my Goodreads challenge at 100 books for 2020, even though I'll probably read in the neighborhood of 150 books again this year. I just don't want that guilt if I somehow take two weeks off from reading because I get really involved in a writing project or something like that. So I'll talk to you again soon. I hope you're having a great week. Bye, everybody.